Hey everybody, JJ here, back again with another Wednesday of Zoom Networking. Really excited about our guest speaker today, really excited about the call. It's, it's mid-December, it's holiday season, and uh, you know, everybody's excited, Christmas and Hanukkah and every other every other holiday we can all imagine. Uh, it's about being with family, being with friends, and I'm thankful today because our guest speakers brought his entire team. We got a pretty, pretty good crowd of people in the call today. Um, I guess speaker today is an entrepreneur. He's a businessman. He started as a student, is now a coach. Um, guy's got personality, charisma, and just powerful energy. My good friend, Mr. Carlos Reese. Carlos, how are you, my friend? Man, I'm fantastic. I just want to say thank you for, for allowing me to get here, allowing me to present myself on this virtual stage and bring my team here. It's exciting. I find admiration. I have Great gratification to be here. I'm super excited. Thank you. Oh, God, it's an honor to have you, man. I've, you know, we've had a pleasure to be on the same same panel, talking at live events, uh, talk on the phone, talk on Zoom. And I uh, you know a lot of people are excited to hear you speak today. Uh, but before we get to the topic at hand, um, let's chat about you a little bit, man. For those that don't know you, what, what part of the country are you from? Or, or I know you're in L.A., but were you raised here? Were you always living in Southern California? Yeah, so I'm from the West Coast. So I live in California, Southern California. I was born in Palm Springs. I live in a city right next to Palm Springs. It's called Cathedral City. So that's where I reside. I've been here my entire life. I've traveled to a lot of different states, but I really enjoy it out here for sure. So that's where I'm located. If you're ever out here, hit up JJ, hit up myself so we can party at JJ's. There you go. We're, we're, we're going to be doing that for sure. Um so, you know, everybody knows you as the powerhouse guy. You got the powerhouse group. Uh, you're visible. You're killing it. You're, you're leading by example, which is which is fantastic. Um, but what did you do before real estate? I, I understand for our conversation earlier, you got some ac- applicable experience that's able to kind of launch you. But what did you do before real estate for those that don't know? Yeah, so I've been in sales for a lot of years. Um, came from the car industry. Previous to cars, um, I was like a, a director of sales for multi-level marketing, as well as for like DirecTV, AT&T. Not a sales clerk, but uh, I I would go state to state to enhance offices, increase their sales. I've done door-to-door sales and all types of sales. Uh, even I sell French Bulldogs as well. I breed them. That's kind of that's kind of my background is getting in with customer service and getting in with, with sales negotiations. And I got to learn from some great mentors of mine. My brother, his name is Steven Robinson. He's the, the reason why I can close the way that I close. And at the time when I left the uh, corporate America or the industry of sales and negotiation, I was never number one. I was great at negotiating, but I, I was a little immature. I parted a little too much to stay consistent. And so the years have gone by since I've left corporate America and, and all these sales negotiation positions. And through time, I just respectfully matured, became responsible, started educating myself, remembering all these great Fortune 500 companies I've worked for. And I just started putting things together. So what you guys see today is the first time I've ever been a performer in my life. I've never done this. I, I, I know somebody that is also in sub two. We both work at the same Ford dealership. He was the number one, number two salesman each month, and I never was. I was always last. And for see to see him leave as a top earner in that business to come over here and to sub to him and support as well, it's it's amazing for me to know that I left as a loser basically in that business. I got exited from the business from no longer being building momentum and just being a little immature. So for me, I'm excited because this is the first time that I've been at this level of performance. That's why I'm here. I believe sales and negotiation is a worldwide skill that everybody should know because at some point, whether it be a product or service, you're gonna have to sell your goals and your dreams and your ideas to others around you, your family, your spouse, especially if you're a young entrepreneur trying to make it and you have your spouses looking at you and there's not a lot of income coming in and they see you in your office working very hard. You're going to have to be able to communicate and sell some type of vision and have to back it up. The reason why most people don't believe in others is because they try to sell them a vision and never backed it up. And I'm here to back it up. And I just want everybody to understand if you can get to that level of performance and back it up, everybody will believe in you again. But brother, you, you are you are awesome. Um, you know, and it, it's funny, you know, we we all 
start in different paths and uh we may struggle at certain things and uh you know you're a perfect example of paying your dues learning different aspects you might not have thought you were successful there but the fact that you're taking those skills and applying them to a new industry and have catapulted not, not even lost you've catapulted yourself to to the top of what's going on is you know um a, a testimony to you and, and to and to your, your to your work ethic. Um, so let me ask you, as you've you've gotten into real estate now, you know, people talk about wholesaling and rehabbing. Uh, in step two, they talk about acquisitions manager, uh, the dispo, transaction coordinator, integrator. Um, did you start when you started real estate? Were you focusing on wholesaling versus rehabbing uh, as, as the avatars and everything for, for sub two got created? Did you see any particular direction for yourself or, or how did you kind of move from the beginning steps to where you are now? Yeah. So uh, a few years ago, I, I was introduced to a buddy of mine named Omar Lopez. He's a TTP student with Brent Daniels. And in 2020, when I got let go from work from being immature and whatnot, couldn't become a performer, I got let go from the car business. And he had he had introduced me to TTP and what wholesaling was. And I was very interested in it. That same month, I got let go after learning about it. So I was interested, but then I had to switch you know, my, my position so I can make some funds so I can start supporting myself right away. So I put wholesaling on the back burner, but I remember... Um, one day that I would come into this business and I was going to crush it. So I left, um, I had learned about tithing through Brent Daniels and I believed that I had to tithe when I got let go. So I had to tithe to somebody who gave me spiritual food. And I believed that Omar introduced me to that spiritual food, which was wholesaling at the same time who Robert Kiyosaki and the cash flow quadrant. So it got me interested in the real estate, though I don't think it was really ever a goal or dream. And um, so I let it on the back burner and I, and I had left a, a card to Omar and I said, hey, thank you for introducing me to this business. One day I will get back into it and I will crush it. But right now is not the time. But I want to say thank you because I'll come into it. So I fast forward into this year, January of this year. I started thinking about wholesaling. What a coincidence. Omar calls me this like the next day as I thought about it. It was like probably January 13th or 14th of this year. And he goes, hey, I know you're no longer a salesman of anywhere around here. And I'm revving up my wholesale business this year. And I have some vetted leads from some VAs. Do you want to come over to my office and be my acquisitions manager and close some deals because you do want to get in here? And I said, yeah, absolutely. So we negotiated a fee. It was a 20% commission. And so I came into this business and on the first day I, I took a look at um, his program and, and how he ran things. And I was there to observe as well. Um, I wanted to see, you know, how he ran it, what programs he used with tools, CRMs, and how he ran the actual business, not just the wholesaling part or the aspect of it. So um, I just did what I normally do. I, and I jumped on a phone call or I, I do what I normally do is just conversate and try to close deals. So I get on my first phone call ever and I close the deal and I found it very easy. It, it felt nothing different than what I've done my entire life. It's just now it was a different product and it was a higher ticket product, but it didn't get me nervous. And I knew right there and then that I needed to shift into this full time if it was that easy. And so about six or seven days later, maybe eight days later, I had learned a lot more questions that are pertinent to wholesaling. And I started to understand this game just a little bit more. So I was calling some more deals. I ended up locking up another deal. Both of them in Southern California. The first one was right around the corner from my house. Second one was in Big Bear. And uh, Omar Lopez ended up netting like 100 grand. I took 20. And I started the powerhouse with the belief system that I could make it one day. This is going to be simple. About two days later, I then saw a YouTube video of Pace Morby. At this moment, I didn't know who Pace Morby was. I only knew Grant Cardone, Robert Kiyosaki, Brent Daniels, nobody else in this field. Pace Morby, he captivated me, basically saying, hey, if you're a wholesaler and it's not working for you, 
There are other ways that you can close deals. Come check me out. Now, I didn't go exactly like that, but it resonated with me because as a closer, as a salesman, there are multiple ways to close a deal. So I jump into his program. At this moment, I had just built the powerhouse. And so I remember the first Zoom that I jumped in with Pace Morby. Um, I seen him in the middle of a conversation, like on a phone call. So everybody's on mute and I'm listening and I can tell right away he's on a, an actual transaction. He's, he's trying to close a deal. He sounded very, very smooth on the phone and I can relate. I, I like to say that I could sound very, very smooth on the phone. And, and um, I just remembered right when he finished closing that deal that somebody said, oh my God, thank you for closing this deal. And I realized that wasn't even his own lead. And I thought, wow, this guy has his own name, his own business, his own leads, and he's a performer in his own community and he's closing other people's deals. And I liked that. I liked it a lot because I had just left Omar's business and opened up my own. My, my own. And in Omar's, I had leads that weren't mine. They were already vetted, so it made it easy for me. So typically, people will get into sub two. And they go and learn what seller finance is or how to do a novation, a fix and flip, what a sub two is, how to do that, how to perform on that. I actually stepped away for a few months and I started to pay attention to how to bring value to a community, how to make them participate. How can I, how can I host daily dial, like my own nightly dial type of thing and try to support others? Because I knew one thing that a lot of people could be a lot of people could be a new entrepreneur in this business and maybe not have the strength or confidence to close a deal or maybe even know how. So I started to promote myself in several different Facebook groups that, hey, guys, I am a closer. I can close any deal if you send them my way. And I gave a little detailed message of where my background was. And I said, come into my community and let me help you out. And I understand branding and marketing very well because the sales business. So me, myself, though I have the powerhouse as a brand, Carlos Reese is a brand. So is JJ, not just the flip side up with JJ. And so I knew that I was going to go start branding myself and putting myself in every Facebook group and repeating that motion because just like a commercial, you might look at it, but it's not your time to buy it, right? So at the same time, I knew that not everybody was going to jump in at that moment due to the fact that they're probably going to close their own deals, so they don't need me. Maybe they don't have a deal ready for me just yet. So I continued this process like a commercial, and it was free of charge, right? Social media. And I was repeating it, repeating it. Then I started getting a little community to come in. And then I started to close a deal, and then another deal for other TTP or sub-2 students. At this moment, I had no structure. I didn't have any expectations. I didn't really participate as much as I am now. And so it wasn't scaling as much, but it was still moving forward. And then down the road, I started to understand, you know what, let me participate more. Let me educate more. Let me do live calls and start closing. Let me record some stuff. Let me make a structure here to separate myself. And at that moment, we started rocking and rolling and we started getting up and more people started coming in. And then around... May is June. I went back into sub two to understand how to do seller finance in subject two. And I met a gentleman by the name of Brad Young, who's now my mentor. And I'm really blessed to have met this guy. He's, he's helped me a lot. And uh, he was he was readily available. It was very accessible for me to call. I talked to him all the time. Hey, Carlos, you, you had said that you went back in the sub two. So I had stepped you... away. Yes, I had stepped, stepped away. stepped away for a little bit. I stepped away because... I wanted to figure myself out and I believed yeah. in myself and I wanted to build this. And I knew that since I was new at real estate and new to a community, how to, how to, how to build it the right way, that I knew that I was new at real estate sub two and the community. It's too much. It's like going to a buffet and putting too much on my plate and then only taking a bite. So I stopped going to TTP. I stopped going to sub two and I just started focusing on myself, my own belief system and what I could provide for my own team. So now as your, as your group started, is that what you mean by your team? What mean your That's, powerhouse yeah. group? Yeah, well, I have a team as well in it that I'll explain a little bit later. But yes, the powerhouse is my team. I love everybody there for supporting me. It's great. I wasn't the best. I didn't have a name at first. A lot of people came in, tried to write me off and told me I was doing it wrong. And probably I was, right? And there was a few people in there that stayed with me and supported me. Like Josh Keating's in here. And Dustin's been a big help with me. Started jumping in. A lot of people started coming in um, after time, after my name get, started getting built. But there were a few that stayed with me. And um, 
I'm not in business to prove the ones who didn't believe in me that they were wrong, but the few that did support me, I'm making sure they're getting the biggest return on their investment for this because they didn't need to do this, especially when I was brand new, I had no name. And so now that I felt confident, felt like a good guy, felt like I had came up a little bit. I then went out back into sub two to start understanding how do I perform? Because I know how to look at deals and close deals, but I was a wholesaler. That was my intention. I didn't know how to see the exits. So I went back in and I started to study a little bit and learn. And I had all these opportunities and they kept coming on my lap. Everybody knew I was already closer. So I got free lead generation. So I JV'd every deal I've ever done and they kept coming in. And I only looked at things as long-term and short-term. But then I met Brad, uh, Brad Young. He started to show me raps, selling notes, splitting notes. He was very experienced and he was accessible. And here's the thing. I had the opportunity because I put myself in a position to have a lot of deals. I had leverage with my community now and others outside of my community knew what I could do. So I had a lot of opportunity with a lot of leads. And then I had somebody who was very accessible with a lot of knowledge. And so it only worked because I had so many deals that I can bring him every single day to look at. And why I decided to do that is one day I worked a deal with him and I only saw it as a long-term or short-term. I couldn't see it to, to make a lot of money. And he says, nonsense, I'll wrap it and make like 50,000. And I was like, no crap, how? And he explains what a wrap is and how to sell notes. And I'm like, I did not pay attention to that. So let me and ask so, you, are, are these wraps now a, a, a part of your... It's my specialty. And oh, here's why. Great. And here's so, the reason why it's my specialty, because I am new in this business. I am very busy. I'm not just acquiring properties. I coach now every Friday for Brent Daniels, TTP. I have my own community. I coach for Nathan Payne's community that does reverse wholesaling every Monday. So I'm very busy besides having a regular life and things like that. Here's why I like wraps is because I'm, I'm not the landlord, meaning I don't have to be there. I don't have to save extra money for like a war chest. Things like that, right? I don't have to manage it myself or pay that extra. With, with the wrap, you just become the bank. So I'm no longer liable to it. It makes it easy for me to put another homeowner in there and make the cash flow and then move on and get to do my things while I can build myself up and scale. So wraps are a huge part of my business and the main part. They're my specialty. And I've now started to learn how to split, split notes and sell notes. And it, it's awesome. Cynthia Spencer, you are on with Carlos. What's your question? Can you explain us a little deeper? What is a wrap, please? Yeah, so what a, it's called a wraparound mortgage. What it is, is whatever terms that are given to you, whether it's with an, with an actual like traditional loan, hard money in place, you need to refinance it, or you're getting it on seller finance or subject to or hybrid, you take a term that was given to you, a term that allows you to make money, obviously, right? So you take a creative finance deal, or even like I said, a deal that was had a traditional loan in there. You take that deal, and then you wrap around an existing mortgage around that. And, and what you do is you're not wholesaling it to an investor. You're looking for a homestead buyer who couldn't get approved for their own business, uh, for their own property, but they still can qualify by making enough money. And maybe they've uh, made some mistakes in the past on their credit. Or, you know, if you switch jobs, like if you're a car salesman or a doctor or a nurse and you switch careers or jobs, or you'd have to have like two years of, at your employers to get approved. And so there are a lot of people that are willing to buy, to jump into a property, pay a little bit more than the average person to then call a house their, their own. So what you do is you take a term example, let's say I lock up a deal at hundred thousand dollars and I get a 2% interest and my payments 600 bucks. And I have that for 10 years. And let's say the market price is 150 for that house. Market rates are, let's, you know, today, six to 8%. Let's say market rent is like 1200 bucks, right? Um, what you do is you can then turn around and then you can wrap around another mortgage on that. You'll be in second position. And now you maximize from where you lock it up at, where you can make money. And now you sell it for market or over market price. And then you charge market or over market interest and you can charge market rent or over market rent. So the example, I take a hundred grand that I had locked up a deal on. 2% at 600 a month for 10 years. And I go and sell it to you, Cynthia, a homestead buyer who couldn't get approved. And I sell it to you for 170,000, though the though the market price is 150. I sell it to you for 170,000. Typically there's money involved on, on down payments, right? 
So maybe there's going to be some money down on there, but then I'm going to charge you 8%, 10%, whatever I can in the market. Some markets have caps, you can only go up to certain uh, rates. And then I'll charge the market rent or a little bit over, and I'll give you either a little bit shorter of a term. So then you can balloon out because you're going to have that rat buyer is going to have to find a way to balloon out before you balloon the seller. And that's what you do. And I like it because where I make the money is from the 100,000 to the 170 minus whatever money they give me down, I keep that spread. And then I keep the difference from 2% to 10% and from 600 to 1400, I keep that. So I'm no longer the landlord, I become the bank. And so I write a performance mortgage in a, in a scenario, worst case scenario, the homeowner can no longer perform. Well, I keep the money that they gave me down at the close. And I keep every payment they gave me and I get them out. Now I'm a capitalist, but I'm not here to, to screw anybody over. So we use registered mortgage loan originators since there's no uh, banks in place. And basically their duty is to, to let you know if whether they would recommend you to put somebody in that house or not. So they screen them and process them. They legally really can't tell you, yeah, that's, that put them in there, but they can recommend you. Um, who would work with, who who would work for coming in as a rap buyer. So we do that process. And now the great thing about me is I no longer have to be the landlord. So automatically I gross, I, I net what I gross since I don't have to save a little portion just in case for any day something happens. Here's an example. If you own a property in Bank of America is who you pay to and the roof leaks, you don't call Bank of America. Same thing here. I'm not the landlord. I don't have to, I don't have to worry about the, the fixtures of the home. So I make more money, don't have to be there, or pay for a, a manager, and I can do my thing and not have to worry about it. And that that check still comes in. And, every, and if I want, if I wanted some cash right away, I can discount my note and sell it for a cash price real quick. And that's why I love rap so much. It maximizes. A lot of people don't ever jump into it. It's uh, It can get very advanced. I love it very much i have a lot of them out there right now and it's amazing thank you so much also before you go can you share all the ways we can follow you and yeah sure um so i do have the powerhouse mastermind i i now coach a, a mentorship as well it's just a, it's a sales program on how to close anything cash and creative i created a 24 step flow chart that helps you out and really what it is is if you're going to be negotiating your your own deals it's uh, the one who, who can control the conversation and ask the, the, the majority of the questions will then get the right answers to curate the close. And most young entrepreneurs just don't know how to ask questions. And even if their mentorships or, or um, other programs that they're in, they host role play or live seller calls. The reality is you're probably just going to get some feedback. Like Cynthia, you did well right here. I would have done this better, but it doesn't teach you how to practice that and repeat that. So it becomes secondary. I actually have a structure and a process. And when people come in and role play with me I, uh, in my actual mentorship, I tell them, where did you learn that from when they mess up? Because that's not what I taught you. It's not what we've been through. And I do that for the fact that when I came into these high ticket sales places like Ford or Cadillac, um, yeah, the first two weeks, they put you through module training, just like some of you jumping in sub two or TTP or wherever, there's module training. But then you guys throw yourselves out there with minimal scripts. So you guys really don't know how to close deals. You guys go take imperfect action, but it's not good enough. Well, these dealerships or these big companies that that wanted us to go out there, they made sure that the next two weeks that we weren't able to actually do deals. You had to have been shown by your, your closer or your veteran salesman to then learn how to present the properties or whatever it was. I'll, I'll give a scenario, cars. I had to learn to, to build the value in cars, open them up and show the value so I can charge you the right price. And then they made sure that I knew how to negotiate and stand firm and not get scared to walk away and, and just freeze up and let me call my partner for you. They did that for the reason that if everybody's busy and, and our managers can't help us out, that you're not losing a deal because you don't know what to do. And here's why. Because if you are in a commission-based position and you work for somebody, typically there still has to be a wage if you're legally working for them. There has to be a wage or a commission, either or. And let's say that Cynthia doesn't close any deals. Well, I have to fork out money out of my bank account. You now are lost on my expense sheet. Let's say Damien over here is a top producing salesman. He actually doesn't lose me money. He takes it off the top of the deals he's closing. I'm also going to spiff him. I'm going to pay him 5% more on every deal and I'm going to get him vacations because he's making me a lot more money. 
And I train my team that if you don't understand it that way, you need to come in and train yourself a couple weeks in. You have to train yourself for a couple weeks of learning how to close at high levels. Because if you don't, what happens is if you try to learn part-time, you'll never, you're never going to learn anything part-time. You guys tried it all before. Nothing ever can stand with you guys or be consistent in your mind if you don't learn it every day. But the next thing is you have to practice it. Here's the hard part. Practicing brings that emotion, those fears, right? Believe me, I used to be scared in the car business. Uh, uh, Cynthia, the car is $60,000. Carlos, you're crazy. I've bought so many cars. I've never paid 60000 Go get your manager. Uh, okay. And then my brother would be like, what are you, an order taker? You might as well work at McDonald's and say, would you like cheese with that? Listen, tell him something like this. I told the guy to Cynthia, that's the sticker price. So I'm putting it down anyways. Let's get past that. And he showed me what I didn't know. Just go ahead and get everything else around it and bring it to me. And eventually he started showing me how to close. And that's who I am today. And I and that's what we train in sales training. It's what I do. And so you can find me in the Powerhouse Mastermind. We do a lot of free training. On my, if anybody in here is in the powerhouse, you guys can drop the powerhouse link in here. Thank you so much. And I'll, I'll drop my Instagram in here as well and my phone number. I've got a link of your uh, powerhouse up for your, your Facebook group now, Carlos. Yeah. So amazing. for if, if anyone watching the YouTube video right now is not familiar with the group, it's Powerhouse with Carlos Reese. And this is the group Powerhouse Mastermind. You can find that on Facebook. And for those that are looking to connect with Carlos on Instagram, here is his IG. I'm Carlos Reese. And um, that is his, his I, IG page right there. We have Mr. Damien Miklowski. Damien, uh, you are on with Carlos Reese. What's your question? Hey, Carlos. Que onda? How you doing, everybody? Um, What's up, brother? So, Carlos, I got a question. Um, so, for, first of all, like when people say like rap buyers, right? I think they're really meaning the buyer of the house, right? That's but, right. Yeah. But I'm going to ask you a question because you, you know, you mentioned about selling the note, right? So I've always like wondered about, cause I, cause I, when I go into like seller financing, I, I'll tell people that like, Hey, you know, give me a seller finance note. And Hey, by the way, look at this website, paper stack, you can sell this note um, as a performing note or a non-performing note. If you don't want to deal with it anymore. Now, on that site, right? They've got, um, you know, the whole. I think. I think. You, are you familiar with it? First of all, yeah, yeah, I have paper stack as well. Yeah, yeah. So they have like all these different classifications, right? But they don't have wraps. And I'm curious to know, like, um, you know, have you ever evaluated what a wrap would sell for as a note, right? And like non-performing versus performing. But the crazy thing about a wrap, though, is that it's just wrapping two other, you know, one, one or two or three other mortgages. Yeah, right? Wrap around, wrap around yeah. mortgage. Mm -hmm. And if you refinance, like somebody could refinance you out and then you totally lose all that potential pay that you get from the wrap and you don't get the, the buyout that you would do if it was like if like the underlying notes would get. Right. So I'm wondering yeah. how that's like how that's valued when you, when you do a resale, like a non-performing right. wrap, a performing wrap, like, I don't know. If so you could put like, you know, prepayment penalty in there and charge it in there. Right. So a wrap is holding a note just to let you know. So when you, when you're on a wrap, you're actually notes. You can't sell wraps wrap. It's like you're selling, it's your, your put your, the strategy is a wrap around, but on paper stack, it's a note that it is. So it's, it's not, you're not going to sell a wrap. It's already sold to the person. It, it's wrapped. It's like a long-term rental or short-term rental. That's the strategy. So I wrapped the mortgage and I sold it to a homestead buyer. So I'm actually holding a note. So it's not like you're selling the wrap, you're selling the notes in place. And typically, yes, there's a first position there, might be the seller. There might be even two or three positions. Could be There could be a traditional loan, right? Subject to then seller finance, then my note, right? That makes the difference. Well, when you sell a note, obviously you have to have enough equity on your end to be able to discount it to where your note buyers are buying at. So that same thing you have to vet your, your note buyers, talk to them. Um, you can go to like creative deal maker um, with Nick. He, you can go there and start finding a lot of note buyers, talk to them and see where they're buying. Some of them are buying at, you know, 70% of the face value, 80%. Some of them want at least one, one payment on there. Some are cool with no, no payment, like no non-performing notes, right? Some at least have, have to have it seasoned for six months. 
So you have to do the same thing. You have to find those note buyers. And so we go back to it. So your equity has to be big enough. So when you discount it, you discount it and still have spread for yourself to make a little bit of change in there. And what happens is, here's an example. Uh, from 100 grand, let's go back to that one deal I was talking with Cynthia. If I got it for 100,000 and I sold it for 170 and I, and I had a note left in place for 160. Well, let's say that you, Damon, you said, hey, Carlos, I'll buy that note at 75% of the face value. So there's 160,000 in there. So it's going to be off the entire face value of both notes, even though I only owe, I only own 60 in there, right? 60,000 is only mine. But what you do is you take 160 and you times that by 0.75, right? Or 75% of it. And you find out that's $120,000 is where you would want to buy this at. So I probably go in and find a couple more to see if I can get somebody to pay me 80%. Let's say I can't, right? So I only find you and maybe I'm in a pickle and I need to, I need to cash out real quick. What happens is I discount it down to where you want to be at that 75%. You're saying, hey, I'll buy your note for 160, but with the wholesale, I need a wholesale discount, Carlos, and you're at 75. So I understand that I have to get it to 120 to sell it to you. And you're going to be buying a $160,000 um, note for 120. And it's still going to get 10%. And it's still going to make that $1,500 that payment. And you're going to have it for the next nine years, which is great for you. And so you actually give me 120000 I go ahead and then clear out the first mortgage at 10 years because I have one hundred and twenty grand. So I go and pay off the salad that I just locked up this deal with. And I pay, I pay them off. So we, we cleared out the hundred grand. I have 20,000 in my hand. So I got some change. And now the note goes from 10 years to, to 30 years or however, how long they want to go. Because now it's a new owner. It's a new, it's a new bank basically coming in place. The bank of Damien now bought it. Now I learned an advanced strategy from my mentor, Brad Young, where before people would have to discount that 160 down to 120 and then walk away with the $40,000 loss. I learned how to keep the 40,000 in a different position and cash flow on that and still take that 20 grand and still clear out first position and put Damien now in first position. And though they're, they're the first position, all the money goes to them first and whatever's left goes to me, but I get a portion in there. I still get a portion of my money and I hold on to that. That's an advanced strategy as well. Um, but I learned that and now I don't lose, I don't lose that 40 grand or that big 25% chunk. I go ahead and keep that. And so that's kind of how that works like that. And then same thing to go to your, how do you know if they can't refinance? Well, they can, but you can put a hefty prepayment penalty. So you can put verbiage in there, in there for sure. That could be me. The only, the only thing, the only thing is that um, if you're wrapping, right, like um, a seller finance note and the bank note, right, you're going to be the owner of the wrap note, right? But the sell, the seller is going to be the owner of the seller finance note. And then you're going to have the bank be the owner of the bank note. So you're going to have two different owners, right? Under your wrap. So what I would or say- three. Or three, or three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or three or more, right? And you you can even have your own note under there wrapped under your wrap. So if you, you're the owner of the wrap, what I'm saying is that like, they can refund, like, all right, you, you did mention the prepayment penalty. So I think that that's where I think you can add value to the wrap when like when you go to sell just the wrap itself but you had said too is like you can't sell the wrap right you can only sell the underlying notes or so or no. so i think i think we're a little confused here so a wrap is just a strategy like hey i'm going to do an airbnb well even with the airbnb there's still a note in place right because there's still someone in first position or second position same thing with long-term rentals right so I think there were a little, there's a little confusion. A wrap is just the strategy. What the how are we going to make money? And so it's a note. So no matter what, even on a long term rental, somebody's holding the first note. Even on a short term rental, somebody's holding the first note. So on a wrap, you're not selling a wrap. That's just saying like, hey, I'm going to rent it out long term. Hey, I'm going to sell it on a wrap. That's what it means. Just a strategy. Now I'm holding a note. So yeah, I'm definitely always holding the note for the difference of what I sold it for, so the difference of what I locked it up for, and the difference of what I sold it for. And you see how a lot of people never dive into it, though Pace has it. Nobody dives into it. And this, hey, I'll give you guys a little secret, right? If you guys find a deal that a seller is open to giving you a long term on 10 years and you only have private money lenders that are giving you six months or, or a year and you're like, damn, I can't do this because I need longer term on this. But my, my private money is only going so long. 
Why do you think I started to sell notes so I don't have to walk away from a deal so I can get in and out and get my lender back? And so I can get in and out like a fix and flip. I fix, originate the note, and I sell it, and I'm out. I'm out, and I make cake doing it. Here's an example. I, I bought it, and here, here's a cool thing. You don't really have to get it all the way up to market ready to go ahead and sell it for market or over. I got a deal that we locked up in Valdosta, Georgia for 65,000. It, it's an escrow for 165,000. I didn't even touch it and market's 140. And so now I get this note, right? And I'm going to, I get to hold it. But the, the, the only thing is I only have six months on that money. So that's why I had to sell the note. Otherwise I wouldn't want to sell that hundred thousand dollars spread of mine. Or I could bring in an equity partner and cash out my private money lender and then keep that, that 100000 and split it with somebody else. I'm teaching you guys some game right now that I got to learn from Brad Young. But straps became very, very strategic for the reason why I didn't want to lose a deal due to the fact that I didn't know what to do, right? And some people will walk away from a deal because their private money only goes so long and they need it for longer. So instead, that's why it became my strategy because I was, as a new entrepreneur, I only had money for six to 12 months. Another cool thing about the wraps is that like it gives like say if a sub two, um, you're doing a sub two, right? And this guy is a, an investor and he wants the power to foreclose. You wrap around, do the mirror wrap, and it gives the seller the power to foreclose and leave him as the owner of the wrap. So that's that's another reason to use the wraps. I don't like to buy like that, but I think I would sell like that. If I wanted to sell a property on sub two, I would wrap it and become the wrap owner, you know? Yeah. For That's sure. it for me. I'll stop talking. Somebody else needs a turn. Sorry, guys. Thank you, Damien. You're good, Damien. Damien, thank you so much. Good to see you. Caleb Colonna, you are on with Carlos Reese. What's your question? I heard you use the term balloon when you were explaining the rap. Um, can you explain uh, what that term means? Yeah, so you could do like several balloon payments in, in a deal, but what it is, is is paying out chunks or the full amount that's left. So like, let's say, Caleb, you let, you let me pay your property that I'm buying for 10 years, but obviously the payments over 10 years doesn't clear out the entire balance. Let's say there's still like $100,000 left after 10 years. Well, balloon means I'm gonna write you a check for the, re the remaining balance. I'm gonna balloon you out. It's gonna pop like a balloon. That's why they call it. It's a balloon payment, boom. It just pops, it's time for you to clear you out. So yeah, and it happens all the time with lenders, right? Lenders giving you a, a year, cool, you got a balloon amount in that year. So that's just basically the end of the term. You're going to have to clear out the rest of the balance that way. Phil, you are on with Mr. Carlos Reese. What's your question? Carlos. Phil, what's up? I love Phil. Doing? She's awesome. It's my guy. And I'm so peachy and fantastic. How about yourself? <laughs> I'm fabulous. Uh, yeah. Thanks, JJ, as usual. Uh, Carlos, my question is, I want to hear you finish your story. No, I want to tell the juice right now. I want to, you want me to tell the rest of the story and get to the other questions? Yeah, I want to hear the rest of the story. JJ, what do you think? Can I finish it up or ask these or answer a couple more and then finish Let, it up? Let's, uh, let's, let's, what, what, what story is this? It was the one that how I got into it, right? But I was breaking it down and how I stepped away from sub two and how I just stepped in. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Okay, it won't take too much longer. But after everything, after I, I had started to figure this out, when the sub two met Brad Young, he showed me that one rap on a deal that I was working for him. And once he showed me that strategy, I was like, whoa, I get a lot of deals that I write off or deem dead because I couldn't see this. And I said, Brad, do you mind if I bring you lots of deals? And if you're able to show me how to perform, I'll give you 50% on them. He goes, yeah. Well, we've closed on like eight, but we have like six. We should have 10, but a couple of them have liens and they've been there for um, a, a few months now. But we have like six in escrow right now. And because he showed me this and he was there to help me walk through it, I started to perform. So right when I got back into sub two and I met Brad, within 18 days of me coming back in and looking at everything, I bought my first four properties in those 18 days. And it was all she wrote. That's when my community was already there. And they then... They were able to see it and then believe it. And it was on from there. My name started to scale, scale, scale. And I started to improve as an end buyer now. I haven't wholesaled a deal in a long time. So now I'm about almost 11 months in wholesaling. Almost 11 months. And I have my own community. I, I just started accepting paid members now. So it's very nice that I become a coach. I coach for TTP. 
I, I have eight properties that are already closed in on, and I have several in, in escrow right now that we're going to do wraps and long-term rentals on. And it's been a great journey. And that's the power of me learning how to build a community as my first strategy through sub two and not going after sub twos and seller finance. And it brought me massive leverage and no money out of my pocket, not $1. So what I tell people is if I was able to build this with no money, no CRM, no VAs, transactional coordinators, no project managers. I had to raise my own private capital, build my own mentorship and, and content, coach with TTP and a couple other programs. And you couldn't catch me and you had everything paid for. You're never going to see the back of my head once I automate everything like you guys have, because I was able to do it with no money out of my pocket using social media. And I started branding myself, right? You guys either, I'm a closer. I let people know, hey guys, my name's Carlos Reese. I'm active now. I'm a brand. There's a saying, build it and they will come. That's old school, like little village old school. Build it, build a billboard right next to it, and then they will come, right? So you guys know me first off to be Carlos Reese and the powerhouse. Hey guys, I'm the closer. Let me close your guys' deal. Come this way. You guys probably see it all the time, right? You guys know now what value I bring to you. And I put it out there in the marketplace. Whether you're an end buyer, whether you're a lender, a lead generator or dispo guy, if you're not putting it out there all day, every day, and a whole bunch of different real estate Facebook groups on social media, you're going to be missing out on opportunity. Lots of opportunity, guys. And that's how I built it. Exactly like that. No money out of my pocket. Because why? I come from a background of, of sales negotiation, branding, advertisement. These, these dealerships, they're charging, they're, they're spending two, three hundred thousand dollars on brands and advertisements, billboards. And, I, and if I did this with no money, I can't wait to start pouring money in advertisements and things yeah. like that, right? Yeah. That's how I did it, guys. I came back in, I came to crush it, and I'm having a great time here. I'm a, I'm a puppy in this game. I'll tell you this, I'm not the best real estate investor. I know some strategies, but I'm a true closer, and that took me to the top because I knew how to close, not because I knew how to perform. I just knew how to close and make sure a deal got done. And bam, that's what you guys see today. That's it. I That's love that. Brother. I love that because um, what you're talking about is what I talk about all the time is to market ourselves, how to network, how to brand ourselves, And you are just a perfect example of someone who's done that and taken it to the next level. I commend you. I commend you. Thank you so um, much. we got a couple more questions here. I'm going to bring a young man on. It's Mr. James Fortson. Hey, James, how are you? I'm great, JJ. How are you? Oh, I'm fantastic. It's a pleasure to have you on the call today. What's your question for Carlos? Yeah, uh, just real quick. Uh, well, I wanted to say thank you both to JJ and Carlos for just being great co-givers. This is um, amazing information that you're sharing with us tonight. So I really appreciate it. Um, but Carlos, you actually answered my question because I know you were you were talking a lot about wraps. And I was going to ask if you hold any properties at all. And it sounds like you do. Um, so it sounds like your business is mainly wraps and, and long-term rentals. Is that what you're doing primarily? I have a, I have a short-term rental and I'm, I'm working on another one right now. It's almost done in Mariposa, uh, right next to, um, our Mariposa forest. It's right next to Yosemite park. It's like an hour before it. And crazy thing is right when it was an escrow, the Mariposa fire went around. I thought I was going to burn my house. The neighbor called us and said, we're leaving because our houses are going to burn. Well, it didn't burn and it burned all the other Airbnbs around. So who do you think has leverage right now? Your boy. You know, that was a very creative deal as well. It's a deal that I locked up and I'm paying less than the PITI than the actual seller is paying. I'm having them pay me a $300 check um, every month towards it. And I'm still making a home run and making, we're making on a long-term rental. It came with an ADU. First off, we didn't know that. So on a long-term rental, it'll bring 45. I'm paying 2,500 a month and the PITI is 2,800, wow. $10,000 down. Beautiful deal. Yeah. Beautiful deal. That's yeah. awesome, man. And then uh, real quick, because I, I want to get more into wraps. Um, so does your mentorship cover that? And it's, other yeah, I'm, that I'm bringing it into it. So I train and teach how to close everything. And here's why. Because if I were to build a paid mentorship and try to go against TTP or sub two, I wouldn't get looked at the same way. So I didn't do that. I just came in and I believe I have the missing piece to the puzzle to most people's businesses, which is, hey, you learned how to do wholesale. You learn how to wholesale and you learn how to do creative finance. 
But uh, without a proper close, you can't do any of those things. And so I just teach how to close at a very high level. Just like Grant Cardone has a sales training, I have a sales training for what we do. That's what gotcha. it is. And yes, next year I am going to be adding wraps and splitting notes as a strategy for sure. Okay. Cool. Thanks, man. Mark okay. Cheng, you are on with Carlos Freese. What's your question? Hey, how's it going, uh, everybody? Um, thank you for uh, uh, pulling me up here, JJ. I appreciate you, Carlos, in so many ways. Uh, apologies, I was coming in late, just landed, but I definitely did not want to miss on this. Uh, I have the privilege to be able to experience all the value that you bring in. And I want to, my question is this. Um, you come from a background of sales, especially car sales, which is a lot more aggressive. And it, it feels like you're trying to, um, I, I guess, convince somebody. What makes your mentorship now different as a buyer where you're more in collaboration and I've got to experience your brainstorming and being able to really bring value and be a right fit? Can you touch up on how you're different and what your mentorship brings as a closer versus just a salesman? Great yeah, question. absolutely. So first, I'm, I'm performing myself and I, and I could close very well. And a lot of people can close as well, but they don't know how to replicate that, right? So you're as strong as your team is, right? And if your team isn't strong and you're, only, you're the only strong guy, then you're missing out on opportunities. Me being a sales leader in different industries for a long time, I've learned how to replicate it. And it was taught in by me, by my brother, Stephen Robinson. And and uh, there's a gentleman named Benjamin Martinez in here. He worked for Ford as well, the same local Ford. He was the number one. And he's seen me spun out. I was on drugs and alcohol. I was losing it is why I got let go. He's seen me, but I, I had turned around and went sober um, to try to figure out my life. I'm going to be sober now. In 12 days, I'll be sober for three years off of any hardcore drugs, alcohol. I smoke some marijuana from time to time, but... Yeah, I've been sober and I've been after my goals. There's no New Year's resolution. I just come after and kill it. So the difference is really me no longer having to overcome and be this snake of a salesman and trying to pound me and make as much money as possible on somebody. It's what we use in the car business. It's called the pound. Like you pound them, you're making as much money as possible. We try to manipulate. And the reason why we're so good is because we only had the certain time frame before you walked out that we had to close you otherwise even if you came in for an oil change not for a car didn't matter we were supposed to pose you that's why we're so creative and there's actually wraps in cars let's say mark you wanted a home your car for three for 500 and i got you approved at 350 at two percent i'll hit you at like 600 at six percent and if you say yeah i just wrapped it but what i do is i now understand all the strategies because of pace morby and brad young and my brother taught me how to close, Stephen Robinson, he taught me how to close at a high level. And so what I do is I don't have an actual, uh, you'll see me close deals and never be the hassler, never have to negotiate because one, I have all the strategies to go with. Two, I know all the questions to ask that are pertinent to this. And on top of being a great closer, I also teach you, that's just the minimalistic level. Then you got to learn the art of closing and what's around that, which is educating yourself on the marketplace and what are the benefits to the reason why we're going to do this with the seller? Because there has to be a goal that has to be achieved by both parties in this. And if you can learn all the strategies and I even teach people how to be transparent, very transparent, it becomes a brainstorm. Most sub two students will come in or most, I say sub two because it's creative financing. And they come in and say, Carlos, how do you underwrite so quickly? Well, I do, I do, um, back of the napkin underwriting, approximate numbers. And the reason why is most people will get nervous and they don't know how to close or even negotiate. So what they do is they bring out an amortization calculator. They plug in 30 year AM at half the market rates and they get a little minimal spread. And that's why some of my spreads are thousand dollars, $1,500, 700 bucks is because I'm just transparent with the homeowner, how it works. And I just respond by asking the question, how much they're trying to make. And I explain exactly how I make money. And so what we do is just a little bit different. We don't just, hey, go out there and, and just bring a lead and try to close it. No, we teach you exactly how to sweeten deals. After you understand that somebody's willing to, to work with you, you, we set expectations up front on the phone call. Then we find out if we're compatible with them and then go over our business model before we build rapport. And if you don't do that, you're going to be one of those people that brings me the lead a month from now and say, I think they're ready. I just don't know how to close it. I'm going to jump on the phone call 
And I'm going to go set expectations, see if we're compatible, go over my business model or see how they would rather work this deal. And then I'm going to hang up and say, hey, JJ, how long were you working this deal? Oh, a month and a half. Well, you were holding on to some hope, buddy, because they would rather do it this way. They'd rather have rented it out themselves. They'd rather have sold it on the market. You wasted your time. I believe the car business is, is some of the best sales out there. And I, I, I'll put my money on that. The, the car salesman out there will outcompete any any real estate guru unless they're, they're, they're champions and stuff. And they came from that business or they learned from people from that business. Grant Cardone, the reason why he's so great is because he came from the car business. And then he's also an outperformer. Pace has learned from some great people. So he's up there as well. And there's some other big names out there. But I can guarantee you the car business has trained us creatively how to get prepared for something like this. And, and we train that and enhance training exactly like that in here. It's not like, hey, you did a good job, Damien, on the call. I would have done this differently. That doesn't teach you. You have to actually practice it so it becomes secondary. So we actually do one-on-ones. We do some recordings. I have an actually step-by-step -step system to teach you exactly what questions to ask. They don't go in order as every seller can, can um, diffuse you. But we teach you about a game plan and how to stick to that game plan and get to the end goal. And it, it, it makes a huge difference. And I've seen a lot of wholesalers and sub-two students come in. They've been here for a year and haven't closed the deal. They spent one week with me and they're closing deals. I took a lead generator. His name's Jesus Lopez. A lead generator three months ago, out of the military, wasn't in business, never been a salesman or in real estate, was a lead generator for a sub two student, put him under my training. He wasn't an old dog that I had to teach new tricks to. He was a young pup and I was his only mentor. And he's done like four or five creative deals in the three months. And I'll put him against most, most sub two students and TTP students. It's because it's who you learn from, right? Like analogy, a thousand ways to skin a cat. I like to break it down and cut in cutting trees. A lot of ways to do it. You can either go and work with, J, you know, let's just say JJ, and he can he can give you an axe, and it's going to take you a lot of energy and a lot of time, a lot of commitment to cut a couple of trees. And then you come work with me, and I have a chainsaw, and I'm going to show you how to smoothly go through everything. And that's the difference of what we have. And like I said, I truly believe that I have a missing piece to the majority of people's puzzles out here and their business. That's awesome. Awesome. Thank you. And then I want to touch up on one thing. And, um, you know, I want to ask this question and it is, it is deliberate how I'm framing it. You're, you were able to create this community with no money out of pocket, buy all these things, but Hey, you got a mentorship. It's going to probably cost me a lot of money. I don't have any money. I just want to learn. Is there a space for me to come in, train and learn on a high level Monday to Friday with a bunch of other closers? And I don't have to put anything upset my time and energy and commitment into it like let's say in the mornings or in the afternoons right <laughs> you're, you're a great guy marco i love mark so much he's such a nice guy i mean this guy for life he's, he's one of my homies now i've met him a few times he's a great connector like jj and he's basically telling me to present what we have here so i pay, i have a paid mentorship it's just for the sales training i have a mastermind that monday through friday we host training for you guys right at high levels so monday through friday has jesus lopez who's my lead who was a lead generator he's actually my leader that runs the role play and then monday through thursday from 3 to 5 30 or to 6 p.m pacific time i call anybody's deal my deals or anybody's deals live and we close deals all the time week in and week out on on um Wednesdays we do or Tuesdays now Josh Keating who's in here and I now we host agent outreach and same thing you have to find out compatibility otherwise you're going to get ghosted and not get uh, offers submitted so we we show how to do it the right way we did it yesterday for the first time and Josh and I got like four or five hot leads live and it was very easy because because we're salesmen and made it easy on Wednesday we have Hunter Neville come in and he he comps he's an appraiser and he shows people he shows our students how to comp on Thursdays, I have Nathan Payne. He's a reverse wholesaler. He's a student of Jerry Norton and, and, and uh, Brent Daniels. He has his own mentorship. He teaches reverse wholesaling. On Friday, I have Stan Lopez, who's a commercial agent in Vegas, a sub two student. He's a creative finance specialist. He underwrites deals that we're working on in our multifamily team. And he educates that for free as well. And then Mark Chang, he brings our book club every Saturday. You guys can find that all for free Monday through Saturday in our powerhouse mastermind group guys come in and learn with us no charge bring your deals we'll close them up we'll encourage you we'll get you going you need an accountability partner guys or a team 
come into communities and you see other people grouped up and you still feel left alone, come over here and crush it. Like the elephant challenge, you know why I like it so much? It takes an introverted person who thinks that they have to do this alone. And it takes them and plugs them in with a wholesaler, a sub to a gator and an agent so they can get a deal done and not have, having to know it at all. We do the same thing, guys. We teach you, you can post like you guys are actively closing deals. Pass someone else that's, that, that knows how to close it. Ask the lead on to your friend who can close it. Get the deal done. We just showed you how to how to get yourself into a piece of the pie. And, and I'm a hungry person. So if you guys want, you guys want to post all day that you guys are top performing closers and your team is killing it. Um, you don't have to be the closer. Pass it over to your boy over here and I'll close it for you and pay you. So get out there and, and start working with other people and jump into what we have here, the powerhouse. There you go. There you 100%. go. hundred percent. One last thing I want to finish off was just, um, you know, there is a massive amount of value in doing. And I really appreciate you creating a space for people to come in and just put some action in, in whatever department and be able to reach out to different people. Uh, you're part of TTP. You're part of Sub2. I'm part of Sub2 in different mentorships. I love the fact that you've created something where somebody can come in and truly understand from A to Z what a close looks like, give them space to become a closer. And in, it's not against any other mentorship, especially Sub2. It is You get to have this when you have no money. You can just have time and attention and willingness to learn and then become a Sub2 student as well and start advancing in all your different strategies and i love that and um i really do appreciate you sorry i had to be on a plane <laughs> miss a lot of the beginning but i watched the i watched the uh the video and I'll, on that note let me give space for others to come in here and ask you questions because you, you provide a lot of value appreciate you brother thank you thank you so much you. Mario. Yeah. good to see you danielle divine you are on with carlos reese what's your question hey carlos and hey jj thanks for getting me on these calls jj i appreciate you um, Carlos, I want to thank you for being actually one of the first people that reached out to me when I joined sub two and just sort of talked to me and talked to me about honestly, just like some of the anxiety of like those groups and just the massive amount of content, Facebook feeds, discord deals everywhere. It's super overwhelming and, uh, it's hard to navigate that. So thank you. I think I mistook this OPM, uh, thing. Cause I thought it was a little bit more about like utilizing other people's money. So two things. I think it's amazing that you reverse engineered your community and your way into real estate. That's fascinating. And I'm curious about the kind of time that you put into that. Cause you talked a little bit about entrepreneurship and having a partner. I'm a mom. I have a two and a three-year-old boy and I own a contracting business. So I am already stacked, but I am determined. I've always been determined to do this. So that's, that's lane number one. Lane number two, I'm truly trying to understand how utilizing other people's money in deals creatively um, at interest rates, like eight to 11%, let's just say, how that is not going to squelch your cash flow. I'm trying to understand how you can actually do this using other people's money and not go into the negative every month as you're paying back your, your lender. Right. Well, I'll answer the second question uh, first. Well, you're paying eight, to, well, depending actually on what you negotiate and who you're right. talking to, right? So, you know, if you're paying eight to 10%, are you doing it annualized? Are you doing it amortized? Is it interest only? Is it cash on cash? What is it, right? On top of that, that's only on the amount they're giving you. And on top of that, are you making payments to them every month? Or are you just saying, let me borrow it for six months and I'm going to balloon you on the six month? Because I don't even make okay. payments to none of my lenders just to let you know. I have them all ballooned out. And that's okay. gives me cash flow, but that has to be creative with you as well. You have to learn to be creative that way. Now, at the same time, if you need to factor in a payment to them every month, then you just got to make sure there's enough spread for you to bring in a private money lender. And if there's not, and you still need a private money lender, throw them as an equity partner. Don't lose the deal because you don't have somebody coming in to help you out. Give them half yeah. the deal. Okay. 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 Cool. Thank you. I need to, I need to like, honestly, fill out like a spreadsheet for myself on every single one of those line items so that I am reminding myself that there's different, I know how many layers there are in creative and I'm just scratching the surface. So I'm just trying to gather that information, put it in one place so I could use it. Yeah. And to go to your first question, you're doing a lot of stuff, right? So um, it's really about how you prioritize your day 
and you know how much time you have like you said you, your mother you have businesses developer all, the, all these things you're doing i believe you said developer um there's a lot of things that you're doing right and so it's really about how bad you want it right how much extra time do you have in a day you you count your time right i'm a busy person and i like to outwork most people so i can earn things well my schedule is 4 a.m i wake up about 4 a.m because why because nine to five is very busy for me already and so I can't get everything done. Like I can't read, I can't study, I can't work out, I can't eat healthy, I can't prepare my day if I don't get up before. So after hearing this the end of my, my life, whole day, <laughs> yeah, can't eat healthy, exactly. can't work out, can't do this. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So Ed Mylett put me on game when I met him. I didn't even know who he was until I met JJ and everybody at the Clever Summit. Ed Mylett came up and he talked about the power of one more. And he talked about his three mini days, the 21 days in a week. And once he told me that it was game over, I was like, okay, so from four to nine, I'm going to have one day. And this is exactly how I do it. I wake up at four and I instantly sit up. I meditate for about 20 minutes, followed by a prayer, take a cold shower. I believe I have to pay the price just a little bit every day. At the same time, cold shower wakes you up right away. It burns a lot of fat. It's really good at uh, health benefits for you. Right after that, I go and work out for about an hour, hour, 20 minutes. I go and read every single day because all the secrets are in reading. I read about 30 plus pages a day. It takes me about an hour, a little less. And then I fill out. If I didn't fill out my day from the night before, I fill it out or I restructure and prioritize. Sometimes I have to cross things off because I just want to fulfill my to-do sheet. That doesn't mean you're going to get it done. So you have to learn to prioritize that. Then from nine to five, it's money-making activities, only money-making activities, doing things that are going to make me money. And then after around 5.30, when I'm off my calls or everything, that's when I'm probably doing some, I'm most likely doing a little bit of paperwork. I do an extra workout. I read just a little bit more so I can earn a little bit more. And then I spend whatever little time I have left right now on my family that's there, my spouse or my family. And it's not as much time for them due to the fact that I'm trying to scale so I can automate and then not have to do 4 a.m. to 10 p.m. like I do almost every day. I'm fired up too. You don't, I don't need motivation. I don't need anything like that. You, when, when you become a winner in a game, like when some people say, hey, this feels like a game, it only feels like a game when you win. And nobody ever talks about losing the game. I've now stepped into proximity of winning. This is a game to me now. And I'm having a great time. I don't need motivation. I'm fired up every day. I'm on track right now. So you have to prioritize your things for sure. How bad do you want it? Prioritize on it and get after it. You know, it has to be step by step. So there's a law of accumulation. Whatever you do good or bad, you accumulate it over time. You got to do it step by step, inch by inch, you know, brick by brick type of thing. So get, it, get started and it'll get done eventually. Even if you don't have much time, you need to do it now because you, it'll accumulate over time. Very consistent, one hour a day. Don't break it up part-time. It will never work that way. At least five days a week, an hour or two a day. Pay the price. Wake up a little bit more because it'll benefit you so then you can win at life. And also your children are going to watch you. And if they fit, if they see you fail and not get up, they'll do the same. If they see you go after your goals and dreams and they see how hard you work, what do you think they're going to do when they have goals and dreams? They're going to do what mama showed them. And that's the truth. Right on, Carlos. I appreciate you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, JJ. Danielle, thank you so much. Benjamin, how are you, my friend? Yo, what's going on, JJ? How's everybody Great. doing? Great. Glad, glad to have you here, man. So uh, obviously you guys know one another. What's your question for uh, for Carlos? Um, more than anything, I actually just want to highlight Carlos. Um, he's actually the reason why I joined uh, real estate, period. Um, I, we will, we both used to work in the car business and, um, you know, I was a top producer for a long time in the car business. And, you know, I met Carlos through there, his brother, and, um, you know, he, he was lost for a good while. And, um, but I saw a lot of potential in him and I told him, you know, shortly before he left the car business, I told him, Hey, like, you know, you, you have a lot of potential. Um, you, you have something special, but you got to get, you got to get right. And, um, you know, when he left the car business, you know, I think, you know, he took that to heart and, you know, I think that's one of the reasons why we have him here. You know, he's a, he's a killer. He's a beast. Um, I left, I, I literally joined sub two because of him and the real estate world. And I actually resigned from my job four days after joining, after joining uh, sub two. So I made a bold move and I said, I'm going all the way. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's kudos to, to, uh, to Carlos. And, you know, he, he brought me here 
and I'm, I'm killing it myself. Um, you know, I'm at, I'm already at 10 doors, you know, in not knowing anything about real estate, you know, seven months ago. You guys have to understand how, how powerful I feel right now, how to see that happen, to see him shift for me to be, you know, at the bottom to, to walk out with a loss. Right. And for me to change it up. And here I am three years later, I'm enjoying you know, it. But uh, a good part of that brother is, I mean, you're, you're, you're a young man still, you know, so you're, you're growing, you're maturing, you're seasoning. And actually I could see you, you've not even hit your full, your full stride. <laughs> when, you get, when you get going, man, you, your, your path is clear. We can all see it. Uh, you, you become a leader and, um, and you do that because you care from your heart. And I think that's what separates you. You're actually helping people because you have a desire to help others. And that's just very, very apparent in how you present yourself. Thank you so much, JJ. It's amazing. You know, to be, it, like I said, it's a, uh, and most people don't know the story. I live the background story too. I live the street life. I've, I've overdosed alcohol poisoning, flatline blood transfusion. I got robbed at gunpoint this year because I was still living the street life. I went broke trying to build the powerhouse. Couldn't pay for bills. Just catching up now that money's coming in. I, I couldn't pay for the last three months of rent. Just cleared one. Checks are not coming in. I went from like a 660 credit score down to 500. I haven't paid my utilities in like months and I'm just getting them cleared. Two months ago, a little over two months ago, I was in so much stress. I had a grand mal seizure um, in my sleep. I almost tore my tongue. Um, redislocated my shoulder, my labrum. And then I had to heal it. And I, I jumped back in the 75 hard. I was 215 pounds Were literally you really? last year this time. Wow. Today I'm 160 pounds. I'm fit. For you. So it, it wasn't, you guys didn't, it doesn't sound like it's been all great. It's not sunshine and rainbows. This shit was tough for me. Very, very tough. And I still made it. No excuses. And no, while being broke, because I had no money, not because it was a strategy I wanted to do. It's because I went broke doing it. Yeah. That's why. Yeah, no, it's uh, your 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 journey, your story uh, and your results. Uh, your story, your journey is amazing and your results are more than mir miraculous. And, and you now lead by example. We got a couple other questions, but I hope you can hold those for the Q&A because we're, we're a little long as it is. So we are going to have some qu questions afterwards, guys. And everybody stick around for the breakout rooms because you're going to love those. You can be in a breakout room with Carlos himself. Um, and Carlos, before we wrap up, I just wanted to ask you one last thing. I kind of ask all my speakers. Uh, my group is a networking group. It's about networking, building relationships. And what you've done is a byproduct of that. So th th this answer, your answer should be relatively easy. But for, for the new investor that's looking to get going, or even the experienced investor who, ha who hasn't taken networking to heart, what, what do you feel is the importance of networking for any investor and joining a group like, like mine or powerhouse to, to make their business go. I believe you could never do it alone. Even if you're a leader, nobody ever does it alone. Networking is the most powerful thing because people are connected to knowledge, money, love, energy. While you're learning on your own, you have to have that around you to succeed as quickly as possible. And in today's era and time, you have to consume as much information as fast as possible. And you have to talk to as many people who are, who are cutting trees with chainsaws, not with spoons or not with axes. JJ is, is, a, is a top networker. He knows almost ev more than everybody I know knows JJ. He's connected to some of the wealthiest people out there. And at any moment, he's a phone call away from greatness. That's all it is. I did that myself. I don't know how to do everything. I know how to close and that's it. I have a I have short-term specialists on my side, network specialists on my side, rap specialists on my side, multifamily underwriters. I have sponsors that are ready to work with me. I couldn't do this alone at all. I'm nobody without my team. I'm nobody without wait, without Ben, without Josh Keating, without Dustin. I couldn't build the powerhouse. Josh and Dustin helped me literally build out the whole frame. Dustin did a lot of the frame. Josh supported everything and helped me out with a whole bunch of flyers and behind the scenes stuff. So we got all four of you guys on on the screen at one time. Uh, yeah. Why don't you That's introduce? Uh, why don't you introduce them and and uh, see what? The, I'll introduce them. Josh, Justin, welcome. All four of us are on the screen at the same time. Uh, Dustin, yeah, you had your hand up first. Why don't you throw in, ask him a question, whatever you got to say. It's mic is yours, Dustin. Hey, hey. 
Uh, yeah, hand is up. I think everybody in here that's had any dealings with uh, Carlos would be the first to raise their hand to give him a shout out. He's a go giver. Um, and that's how we truly succeed in this, uh, this environment or enter envi- any environment that you, you enter. And, uh, and I, I like to keep my network pretty thin. Uh, I have a lot of uh, associations and uh, or associative relationships with people, but I keep my close network really thin. And Carlos just vibes right from the get go. Very intentional, very transparent. And uh, he's just a rock star, man. I just want to come out and give him a shout out. But uh, that's why I come in and I I turned the go giver on as well and uh, came in, provide some value and anything I could do to help him build his community, utilizing what I'm good at to help him uh, push his message out there and continue to, to grow. That's fantastic. Josh, you're up, brother. What do you got? What do you got for us? Oh, I just want to I want to thank Carlos first off. Thank you, JJ, for having him on. Um, it's it's been a crazy journey already since I met Carlos. Um, we've been through a lot together. He's been by my side through a lot of things that I've went through personally, also. And we he's kept me accountable throughout all this, also. Like we talk every day and we're always on page, like seeing what each other's doing, making sure he's motivating me and I'm motivating him. And, and just, and if there's never, never any fluff either, it's always real, you know, and and the fact that he brings everyone together. And if there's some sort of, you know, thing we've been through a lot of stuff within the community already, there's been, There's been snakes and weasels and rats and killers and all kinds of stuff that's happened. And we navigated it. We navigated it through it in a professional way without really knowing that that's what we were doing yet. And it turned out wonderful. And just the love in the community, like you can't like it's really a place where we're all, we're all go givers and we're all uncommon in this space because we're all trying to do something really great with our lives and with ourselves. And he gives us a space where that can be common. What do you guys have have done? What you guys have put together is pretty phenomenal. And I'm, I'm, I, I know I've seen it. You guys are saying as well, anytime you do something good for a number of people, there's always going to be a couple haters in the crowd and we just got to stay true to what we're doing and ignore those people and continue with our mission. If you guys are on the YouTube channel now watching the presentation of Carlos, please like his presentation and please put some comments down in the box below on the YouTube channel. If you guys are on the call right now, uh, please feel free to uh, stick around because we're going to have the breakout rooms. I got a puppy that's chewing all over on me. Um, and, you know, please come back and join us again on on, uh, Zoom Networking. We're going to continue to bring you great speakers like Carlos. You can see all of our speakers on Flipside Up with JJ, which is my YouTube channel. Um, And again, if you want to connect with me or my networking group, uh, look for jjazizian.com and just click register now. Uh, In addition to that, you can find Carlos on Instagram and you can find him on the Powerhouse group on Facebook. And if you need any help, um, Get a hold of me, and I'll put you in touch with him. On behalf of Carlos and myself, Carlos, you ready to sign off, brother? On behalf of Carlos and myself, guys, we'll see you soon.